Hi there, Dan West again. Um, this uh, this video is a little different from the others. Um, I've really been kind of struggling in a sense of trying to put something together with uh, it's just it's just all too too prevalent to not speak about and. Uh, I know earlier I talked about, uh, for example, I work out of the King James Bible. I believe in that Bible. I also believe it's got some errors in it. It's not perfect, but I think it's God-given that way. I don't think anything's a mistake, and I don't put anything beyond the power of God Almighty, and I'm speaking of God the Father. <clears throat> I know I've talked about... Uh, how I studied the uh, the different translations uh, when I was uh, six years studying the history of the, the Christian church, circa 70 to the present day, all the different denominations where they came out. And during that time, I got heavily into the um, Nicene Creed, Constantine, and many of the so-called fathers of the church. And I hate to even use that term. But uh, looking into each and every one of them, their, what their makeup was, trying to find what their true agendas were, and they were varied. Every one of them had something. And they were not all princes. They were uh, men of uh, questionable conduct uh, in, in many ways, some, and some worse than others. And yet they're looked upon as the greats. Uh, it's like, kind of like movie stars look upon their own, and yet they're full of iniquities and, 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 and immoral conduct from, from the get-go, and yet they're looked upon as, as just fantastic people, and, and the kids all scream and rave over them. Um, truth is what this is all about. Truth. And um, I also talked about how the Bible is very characteristic in numbers, how numbers play a very important role in, in, in showing how this Bible cannot be, uh, Bible I'm speaking, when I say Bible I'm speaking in terms of, of the actual <coughs> uh, written, written documents of old, specifically Hebrew and the Greek, because they both have a numbered system alphabet. And when scholars have uh, uh, looked upon this and found incredible um, uh, systems in terms of how many vowels and how many downs and how many this and that, uh, all divisible by seven exactly, uh, and then how the uh, the first ten generations of the Bible, their names mean something, and when you take that phrase of that name, it actually t talks of a of a, a depraved society, saved by a messiah, a messiah, I mean, it's a very interesting study, and I mentioned about, you know, bringing forth, but you know what, I'll tell you what, in terms of numbers uh, in the Bible, uh, the, the late uh, Chuck Missler, he has several fantastic sermons on this that I, I could never come close to what he's got with his computer and how he lays everything out, I would say if anyone's interested, uh, with an open mind or whatever, and, and you'll find out how clearly this could not have been a, a creation of man because it is so complicated and complex, and yet how the numbers fall into into, into everything. It's uh, clearly only only a God could have created this. Uh, and in, in terms of uh, uh, the history of the church and what have you, there are several really great uh, um, uh, things on the uh, internet. Uh, Tom Tom Nelson is one who had a, a, bit, a long series on on the history of churches. Very good. Um, he's out of Texas. <clears throat> um, and of course, the translations of the Bible speak well. Of what Bible's correct? Is there any correct Bible? Do you believe they're all uh, inerrant and things like that? And uh, m most of them are contrary to the King James. And one 
frivolous and they'll say, well, it's so hard to understand, it's old English, uh, you know, I mean, that's, I, for me, that's a pretty weak cop out, uh, and yet there are some expressions, you get a Bible dictionary for the King James and it, it explains those, there are areas where it, it can be, you know, what's that mean, but all in all, God's message is pretty clear and straightforward, and um, this is probably what I want to touch upon in this video. Um, I see some similarities in, in, in just about all the, the, the well-known pastors and how they'll treat certain uh, doctrine as well as how they will treat certain verses in the Bible and especially how they use the, the name God all the time. Especially the Trinitarians, always kind of referring to the God every now and then, and that's the Trinity God. I am going to point out some some verses that I still think are pretty outstanding in, in terms of what the message is to us from God the Father. Um, What's been kind of disturbing lately is last several weeks I've been trying to get a handle on on this uh, new um, ap apocalyptic uh, 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 reformation that's going on right now. This whole new change in in uh, ministry and it's some just very heretical. I mean, just I mean, just. You know, it's just hard to put the words, you know, I mean, you can say all you want about maybe, you know, uh, Joyce Myers or Kenneth Copeland or Joel Olstein, but some of these new kids now, I mean, dreadlocks, drags, in, in, in some cases foul language, very questionable music, uh, and what it, you know, of course, you know, what a lot of it boils down to is a head count. Get them people in the church. Get them in your in your in your in your building. And it's all about, in a lot of cases, all about money. Now I'm, I'm sure some are really so demonic to, uh, possessed that they willfully and 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 and, and gladly uh, perverse the scriptures, uh, present them uh, incorrectly. And this is not all. This is not all the the, the crazies out there. Uh, I just was it just yesterday? I was trying to again get some more basis on, you know, just where some of these uh, pastors are. And I don't usually like to mention names, what have you, but I'll tell you what, uh, one of the more popular ones, and I used to listen to them on on the radio years ago. Um, Greg Glory. I know a lot of people are into him, you know, and he has a way of. You know, throwing his, you know, not too funny jokes in every now and then, trying to, you know, kind of lighten things up, uh, you know, be all comfy and all that. Uh, but he he was talking about Calvin, Calvinism. And when he got to the point, I believe, of like election, you know, where uh, there are those who are just, you know, before the world was uh, damned to begin with, and. Very angrily, he says, "I reject that. You know, I don't. You know, I don't. I reject that." It's, he's, his sermon's on the on the internet right now. You know, I, I saw just a couple days ago. Now I forgot to check the date when that was actually uh, broadcast, but I just found it yesterday. Just going through, <clears throat> man. I mean, you talk about God's word. Uh, you're not talking about a typo. A typographical error in, in a printing of it, but yeah, and, and yet these men, like I say to my wife all the time, you know, these men are learned. They're they're skilled. Some of these men have fantastic memories for for scripture, or something they've read in some book by Sturgeon or something, and quote it word for word. Uh, uh, some have a very charismatic way of preaching their sermon, you know, or um, a, a very um, uh, entertaining way of talking to the mass, you know, and maybe throwing their old joke in every now and then. They're talented people and they're educated, and yet 
they've got to know these first, which I'm going to point out. And they'll openly just defy it or just openly go right over it. Uh, one pastor, for example, uh, again, I hate to bring up, but uh, John, John MacArthur. I think he's a great teacher in terms of verse by verse, clearly explaining the misconceptions of how, or the misinterpretations of how some of these parables have been taught to people. Uh, he's a very gifted man that way, and yet he's quoting Galatians, uh, where it talks about if, uh, you know, even if uh, Paul is saying, uh, even if an angel from heaven comes and preaches uh, 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 another gospel, which there is no other gospel, he talks about being a curse, a curse, a curse. This man's a Trinitarian. Openly, a thousand percent, a Trinitarian. To be a Trinitarian, and I'm going to prove to you, God's Word, take it or leave it, that it's an outright blasphemous doctrine against the true Creator of all things, God the Father. And just, you know, properly, you know, expounds on that. Uh, like it doesn't mean, like it doesn't, like this verse, this verse doesn't apply to him at all. Now, I was a member of that church for a while, and I left. When they told me if I didn't believe in the Trinity, uh, I had no salvation. I about fit yeah, man. Within, within within less than a span of a few days from uh, from from a bi man's Bible study to the, the Sunday, uh, I was told that twice. And... Um, I don't know how more blasphemy you can get than, than say something like that if you believe in the Trinity, if you don't believe in the Trinity. I mean, that probably shakes a lot of people who might have not that strong a faith or or they just don't really study or they read but they don't see it. I, I don't know how to explain it to you. But, um, you know, think, well, like, the jump, like Chuck Mitchell said one time, I've never been to seminary and he said, thank God. Because some of the things I hear come out of the mouth of some of these people who've been in seminary just shocks me. This is a very intelligent man. You know. um, again, he was a Trinitarian, but he didn't go to formal school, self-taught. But he was a very educated man and uh, had a ministry and uh, uh, I guess you'd call him apologetic or something, because he or just a teacher. But he was, and I would again highly recommend his study in terms of the numbers in the Bible, that kind of thing. Um, uh, he was very good at that. But we'll, let me get to some of the key points. <clears throat> One thing that I notice was just about all these different uh, churches, which is, now I'm speaking of not the fundamentalist uh, uh, now, when I say fundamentalists, I mean like people who adhere to the King James Version of the Bible. No other, no other version. Who try to really uh, go by the word for word. And now, when I say that, the literal sense, I'm not saying uh, the, the verses, I think it's in Luke where it says you handle snakes and, and drink poison. That, that's a different, different type of terminology. When you look into the actual terminology of meant, handling snakes doesn't mean literally handling snakes. Handling snakes is like you're, you're, you're dealing with uh, wretched people and how you let yourself or, or don't let yourself, you could be amongst them but won't let yourself get tempted and swayed by these wretched people. And a drinking of poison is false doctrines. Doesn't only mean you're drinking kerosene or paint thinner, you're, 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 you're taking in and you're hearing somebody saw, uh, give you some kind of false doctrine. That's the difference in terms of understanding your interpretation. But the other literal sense, Son of God, that's Son of God. And how many times you hear these guys, oh, it means angels, you know, or something like that, and Jesus was a man, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, not really a deity or something. I mean, you know, really, really heretic. <clears throat> or they'll take something, and this <laughs> one guy, and he was talking about, I forget what the exact subject was, but he was going off. He, he was going. He, he'd mention, he'd mention the, uh, the the subject matter, and he started going off in, in, into grammar. 
Well, this word actually is from the Hebrew, but the, the Hebrew, the different tribe of Hebrew, and, and they would do this to it in the word, uh, El, you know, like Elohim, for example. He was talking about one time Elohim. Elo and then him, H I M, plural. Well, usually when you, when you talk about Elo is God, and with Elohim, it means not plural, it means something very special, a deity, a hierarchy. When that few words are added to a word, it means uh, kind of separate, like, 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 you know, not just. He wasn't just a scout member, he was the head of, of, of the scouts, that type of deal. And so they'll, they'll go into all this type of stuff and then actually kind of tear down the meaning of what was printed. So, <clears throat> my point is, and, and, and I'm, what I, I, I don't intend to sway people at all, because I firmly believe, as it is in Ephesians, God's elect were already chosen before the world was first formed, before the foundations of the world. Many were called, few were chosen, meaning he created all the souls. God the Father created all the souls that would ever be on this earth. All right? And of those souls, he knew his elect. And he chose those few that would be predestined, that were predestined, and that would be justified and glorified, sanctified, glorified, at a certain time for each one of them, under certain different conditions, circumstances, what have you. Now, this is what people have a problem with. You know, it's just like, these young kids or people around are worried about the ecology. Now, we should be good, good uh, stewards of this planet, uh, by all means. But to think that hairspray is going to blow away this planet or we're going to kill this planet with our foulness and, 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 and lack of taking care of it, never happened. There's no way man, little man, is going to take away the glory of God and what he's already prophesied that's going to happen. And this world's going to be blown away by fire, by, by Christ. Not by some hairspray or by, you know, uh, too much oil in the ocean or, or, or cutting down all the trees. I'm not saying these things are good, these things are bad. But I'm not saying just the end of itself, that is not going to do it. The, the, the losing of the snow caps and everything, uh, God will end this world. Just like no man took his life on the cross, he laid his life down. Um, I hear nowadays everything's Jesus, 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 you know, and, and it'll take verses, uh, I am the only way to the Father through me, no other way, and, and then you come to me and, and, and you know, and, and, and confess sins, etc. all me, me, all Jesus, that's all Jesus, it's not all Jesus. Something struck me just the other day when I heard this one guy who's a non-Trinitarian, who is a, yeah, non-Trinitarian, I mean, he, he doesn't believe in the Trinity. But, I mean, this guy gets his stuff so screwed up. Always got the smile on his face and everything, like, you know, don't you understand what I'm telling you? Yeah, yeah. It's just so simple, so clear. And he's got it wrong. And this, this one, uh, he was quoting John, First John. <laughs> I can't believe. And he's talking about, you know, this and that and God and everything and Jesus and all this and, and, and questioning things here. Missing the big picture. I'm going to start with that right off the bat. And I just told you about uh, Matthew 18, 22. Many are called, but few are chosen. God created all the souls that ever would be. And of that, he created, he, he chose his elect, of which he knew. And just like in uh, the verse where he says, the day will come and many will say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done this in your name and that? And, uh, and he'll turn them and say, uh, uh, depart from me. You, you know, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. That is very key. You know, he never knew them. So they were part of that many, you know, when they were first uh, uh, solar created. But he didn't know them like he knew his elect. He knew his elect. Now, I've heard people say, well, he looked in the future, and or he did this. How do they know what he did? 
how can you be so arrogant to say you know what he did or even, you know, put in someone's mind, well, it might have been this, you know, so you're not saying you know it, but you're saying I'm, yeah, it might have been this. So you're putting that in someone's mind who's there to try to learn from you, and you're suggesting this because they'll just, well, the preacher said he did this way. No, he said he might have been. Oh, well, you know. You don't know what his purpose was or how he did it or why he did it. You don't know. You know, he's in such a different multiple dimension of state than we are. We're at, what, three dimensions? They say maybe four. But he's beyond all that. There's no way you can know this and know that. A lot of people say, well, what we're going to be in heaven or when we die is going to be this way. You don't know. But what you should do is take your Bible and like it says in the very first verse, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, God, what God? Peter, right off the bat, when you learn a little bit more, you're, well, you, well, there's God the Father, and there's uh, uh, Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I'm going to get to that. But you keep that in mind, what God? And here's this guy, I talk about this Trinitarian, <clears throat> um, Unitarian, excuse me, Unitarian, 1 John. How does 1 John start? In the beginning, and it's talked about the Word was God, word was, the Word was with God, etc., etc. And they go right over that. It's like you're just talking about something else. In the beginning, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Now, when you understand your Bible and you look at John chapter 5, starting at 19, starts at 17, you skip 18, then you go to 19 to 24, but the very first verse of 19, uh, Jesus is speaking and he says, the Son can do nothing but what he sees the Father do. Now that right off the bat is not only deep and heavy, but it's it is really, I mean, deeper than deep. The Son can do nothing but what He sees the Father do. Present tense, He talks about raising the, the dead, you know, healing and all this stuff. He goes down the line. So, in Hebrews, God speaking of His Son how he, he made him better than the angels. And he's referring to him as the son. That's, you know, that he made him better than the angels. Who made the world? The world. Clearly stating this world was made by Jesus. And when you go back to Gen Genesis, again, in the beginning, God created the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was empty and void, etc., etc., and water laid upon it. Well, right off that's where the King James Bible, this is an error in a lot of Bibles, maybe not as bad heretically, but the two words were, were purposely changed. And and was. And should be but, and was should be became. But the earth became empty and void. Thus, that means. God created heaven in the beginning. Beginning of what? The beginning of everything in terms of this world. Not, begin, not in, in, in terms of all the souls being made. That was before that. Ephesians. Before the foundations of the world were formed. Try to, you know, read scripture and get it in proper context. And when these people are telling you something different, they say, well, wait a minute, why just say this? So, God the Father, Jesus is there with him, learning how to do it. The Son can do nothing but what I see the Father do. So he, the Father is teaching him how to create, to make. And there's other verses in the Bible that states, that states these, these, uh, these specifics where Christ was with his Father. God created the world from nothing because God the Father created everything 
He created the atom. He created light. Not the light bulb or the sun or the star. He created light before all the other illuminations came into place. He created gravity, the, the laws of physics, matter, space. He created everything. And he's showing his son how to also. And there again, before we even get to the creation of the world, God the Father, he had sons, correct? He created all his sons. And what did he do? God the Father did what? He chose one of those sons to be his identical double and eventually his only begotten son that would come to the world and become mortal and continue to fulfill scripture in that he would come and with the plan of God's salvation for his elect, <clears throat> thereby Jesus now would be the one who would accept him because at a given time, uh, the, the predestined time for each one of those souls, God will draw those souls by giving them through his grace and mercy the gift of faith and draw those souls to Christ, whereby Christ will take them now and he will bear their sins and go to the cross and pay the price and upon us place his righteousness. This is the key that they all skip over. Why? Free will. Free will and yet uh, at the same time uh, M M MacArthur uh, will preach, or, or others I should say, I just shouldn't pick him out, will preach <coughs> Um, Calvinism, which starts out with depravity, total depravity. Nothing can be further than the truth. There's no baby that's born in sin. No way. There's no child that's born in sin. What about the, all the babies that are, by the millions, aborted? Huh? What, do you think that's just, uh, just, just an embryo, just goes to waste? It's not a, it's not a living being. A living being from conception. That's how life is is, is done, and they're well, so they uh, uh, just because they can't move, or whatever uh, from from the very beginning, uh, and they're aborted uh, because of the pill, the, the pill day after, or whatever, like they do in France and everything, or just from the knife of the brutal uh, sadistic doctors that take, go in there and, and and wipe them out, even at at birth. They're talking even at birth. I mean, the Romans would do this; they would take the if it was a girl child, they would take them. And they wouldn't uh, do abortion, it was called fantasize, where they would take them, the babies, and then put them on a roadside and let them die of exposure. And yet there were men who knew this, and they would constantly uh, survey the roads, and they find a baby, they'd take the baby in, raise that baby to be uh, a slave or a prostitute. It's horrible, it's horrible. But uh, I, there's no way that born in sin, because I've got a video on the 144,000, and they are all children, less than two, two years and under. And even in Matthew, God, uh, when he's asked who's the greatest in the, in, in the heavens, all he, he, he calls a little child to him and puts a child in the middle. And he said, at least you uh, uh, confess your sins and be born again and become like this little child. You can't enter heaven. Now, how can this little child enter heaven if it's full of d d depraved uh, and depraved of sin? I mean, well, thank God I didn't go to seminary. Uh, but these guys who come out of these seminary classes, they've been so drilled, like these young ones now. Now, you know, this is 2000, it was June of 2020, and look at the other people we have going on in the streets. Seattle wiped out. The mayor said, oh, it's just a love party. Uh, you, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's really beyond words. It's so, it's so bad right now. But you're talking about your salvation right now. This will come and go. <laughs> salvation is forever. <clears throat> so, you don't have free will. No man can come to me lest the Father draw him to me. John 6.44 There is no free will. And yet, there's glory. I don't believe it. I can, I can choose it if I want to. I don't believe that at all. 
pre-election and our election and and uh, and all these are, are like he's talking to his congregation they're all going to go to heaven does he really believe that are you are you kidding um to to question god's sovereignty in any way you don't know these things so you take the scripture and yeah there was you know over a hundred over a hundred people who wrote you know, paul john matt mark all that. but it's not their words they are given what to say, I mean, to every jot and tittle. They are given what to write down. It's not their own, their own uh, uh, inference or their own impression of what took place, by no means. And yet, again, Chuck Mitchell has got a, a fantastic study on this, how you look at these different writers and their vocabulary. The vocabulary that's used is different. Unique to each man, talking about specifically the... Uh, um, uh, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, uh, their styles of writing and the poetry and all that. I mean, it's just, or just even the Book of Ruth. It's, a, it's just a, it's an amazing um, piece of literature right there. Um, <clears throat> so, what these people are teaching wrong to their parishioners or their members, whatever you want to call them, they're leaving out the most important, the key element of salvation, which is God the Father. You have either been predestined for eternal life or eternal damnation. That's just the way it is. To uh, To fight against this is understandable because you're probably among those that's predestined for, for hell and Satan is uh, doing everything he can to stop everything, everyone else from going and being drawn to Christ. But I'll tell you, it'll never happen. Once God has chosen his elect, there's no way anyone can take him out of his hand. There's no way anyone can lose their salvation. Can't happen when you're chosen and you're given um, God's good grace you're now tra being transformed under the sanctification of the Holy Spirit to conform into a different soul, a different spirit more Christ like <clears throat> it's different with everyone but that is the premise and that is the basis and that is the direction not to be deterred. You cannot lose your salvation once you've been uh, chosen and you haven't come to earth, to earth yet. But when you do come and you'll go through your life, I didn't come to, to, to Christ until I was in my 40s. But from then on, I've had his burning desire to learn, even though I was in the wrong church at the time. And yet uh, now, I, you know, I can't find any church, unfortunately. I wish I miss fellowshipping. I miss... Uh, 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 being in a, um, a Bible study but uh, it's so hard to find anyone who's not only not a Trinitarian but believes the Word of God in other words there's no there's no longer the Sabbath day the first day of the week is the Lord's Day uh, the fact that uh, uh, if they understand they call, they call it a gap theory where God created the first earth. That's where your design, dinosaurs were. You wondering where the dinosaurs go? There they are. Or some of these uh, weird monuments, Easter Island, some of these uh, w uh, bizarre buildings that they're still standing and can't attribute it to any uh, person or, or group of people. There they are. He, he God, he filled, he built the earth. He uh, he filled it with 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 life. And he also placed a judgment on it with a flood. And that's how he's handed over to your, his son. Okay, now you, you, I've showed you. Now you, you take over, build your earth. You build your earth and you fulfill scripture. And he left. I don't mean left. I mean, he, you know, it's, it's, it's for his son to do. And when his son speaks, he speaks the word of God. Because they are like, you know, he made his son exactly like him. So when he speaks, he speaks the words of his dad. 
That's why he says, to see me, to, you have seen the Father. And when you hear him speak, you hear the words his Father would speak. And there are only a few times in the Bible where he, the Father actually did speak, which is uh, in, in his baptism. He says, um, this is my beloved Son, hear him, you know. And the other one was in, in Hebrews, where he's talking about how, you know, he made him better than the angels, and he made the world, etc., etc. So, again, when this guy was talking about um, 1 John, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God. So, to, with God as well. When you go to G Genesis, the whole first chapter is God, and in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and then it says, and the Word was out void, and God did, and from then it's God, 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 again, do all these things, you know, light, plants, you know, vegetation. And you get to chapter 2, and the first Four verses speak again of how uh, God did this, and I think the third verse is, and in the generations, uh, the fourth, yeah, the fourth verse is, uh, these are the generations of the creation of uh, the heavens and the earth by Lord God, our Lord God. And from then on, this God is referred to as Lord God. And in Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5 is, is, um, we have but one Lord God. We have one Lord, and it's one Lord God. And this is, in a sense, this is Jesus. We refer to him as Jesus, that's what we know him as. Uh, but all this uh, Old Testament, it's Lord, the Lord God. The God of this earth is Lord God. And yet they'll confuse us all the time. You're thinking, what God are you talking about? You're talking about the Trinity again? And the Trinity just jump all over this. The burning bush, Lord God, he sent his angel to, to I guess, to, to illuminate this bush, to make it seem like it's really something, because the bush wouldn't consume, but yet this fire, but it wasn't, wasn't heat, like it was burning up. And the voice, I'll say again, it was Jesus, Lord God. It wasn't God the Father, and the Jews had no idea what they are talking about. Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh, you know. One God of this earth, which is Lord God, period. Period. That's the only God that was involved, uh, as far as we're concerned, because his dad showed him how to do this, and he said, you take over. Now, this is his, this is his gig, his act. That's him doing all this. And yet we're flipping back and forth, you know, and, and all through Scripture, when, when we finally hit the, the New Testament, the Father, my Father who sent me, my Father, my father, not my equal, my, my Trinitarian equal buddy. You know, what Trinity? You know, I mean, th three in one, all eternal. How, how can you be eternal and, and, and yet you have a dad and, 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 a, and a son? As far as I'm concerned, you know, dad's always older than the son. Dad came first. They go right over this and no one, no one questions it. Oh, you sit there with the Bible. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, okay, you know. I mean, it's just hard to to sit and watch this. All these brilliant people, and you have the Word of God in your hand. You read it, and you let these guys tell you something so so comical. If it was the fact that you're talking about salvation, it's it's actually not even comical. It's just a disaster, and to for yourself. Not to question it, but to go along with it. If you're really serious about your salvation, you say, well, wait a minute. Look back at your scripture. Get rid of the NIV. The, the, uh, the new NSA, uh, the new American Standard. I mean, I, I happen to have them, but so I was going through my progression. Go back to your King James Bible. Not the new King James, your new your King James Bible. And if you need to, uh, buy a Bible. They're, they're inexpensive. A hardcover is cheap. If you need that, you really shouldn't. What you should do is pray for wisdom and understanding. That's what I do. And then you'll go right through it. And then you'll get to love that book. Because it is a true word of God. It's right there. And when you're reading something, you said, my son, it's his son. It's not some angel or some other character they're trying to predict. Christ. Christ was and always was and will be and after he was the Lord. He came in the form of a human. He didn't just 
take off now he's somewhere and this guy's doing this thing. No, it's the same, one of the same. He was the one who grew the trees that they cut the cross out of and built the mountain that they put him on when he crucified him. He did all that. He built man. Again, here's something else. First uh, Corinthians eight six talks about as for us we have but one Lord, one God, God our Father. Uh, all things are of Him, of Him, and we in Him, and all things are made by Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we by Him. Very important, the word is of and by. In Genesis, God, which is the Lord God, which is Jesus, says, let us make man in our image. Uh, in our image, we make man male and female. But it make, the word is, makes it sound like it's one guy and making men. Not, well, men means, you know, a man is just not always male chauvinistic. It means man, uh, men and women. It's just the way they, they terminology the population. Instead of the population, uh, the, 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 the people is a man. And we are made by him. God the Father made all the souls. Jesus made all the mortal bodies, male and female. Now, who was with him? That's another topic. Uh, uh, I wouldn't profess to say it's doctrine by no means, but there are other scripture that leads, you know, to cleverly shows you without really telling you what it probably is, and that is in Matthew 18, no, Matthew chapter chapter one, verse 18, where Mary is found with child of the Holy Ghost. And in Hebrews, that's where God is speaking, God the Father, I made him better than the angels. Well, I don't think the word I was there, but he's made better than the angels. Who could actually make him? It would be God the Father. And in the ex ex expressed image of the Father, of me, whatever, you know. So there's two, there's two people there. One is actually forming them how he wants them to be and look and all jazz, or he did for them. And then there's one who's delivering the embryo to the mortal woman to give birth. I mean, to me that just says volumes, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's actual doctrine, but it stands to reason you always hear father, the father and the son, the father and the son. Have you ever heard him talk about the mother? You don't, do you? You know, a lot of times too. You would think in normal customs, the man always wants to keep his wife in the background because he wants to protect her. He doesn't want to put in the front to be taking shots at, you know, and, and maybe remarks or whatever or in any kind of danger. But uh, uh, the, the the Holy Ghost is by by no means weak. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is very powerful, and the Holy Ghost is what our comforter. Our comforter, our Holy Ghost, is the one who ignites our conscience as to good and bad. Our Holy Ghost is the one who, when we, when we have a situation where we could either go this way or go that way, and encourage us to do the right thing, or say the right thing, or maybe say nothing at all in a situation. The Holy Ghost is our, how do I put it, you know, our, our nurturer, as a mother is to a little child walks his child, takes it by the hand, makes sure it doesn't cross the street by itself. You know, I don't know how much plain it can be, but um, uh, the Holy Ghost is very special. The Holy Ghost is the one who sanctifies a lot of the actions of the Father. Uh, for example, in Ephesians, when it's, he's, he's, by His mercy and grace, He gives the gift of faith. The gift of faith. It's not something you say, oh, I want this, I'm going to do this. There's no free will in that. Or your ability to all of a sudden have faith. You can go about it in a, in a satanic way, 
Satan is not impudent. He can make you do things and make you sound like you are, but in reality, it's the gift of faith by the God the Father, sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So, clearly, you know, when, you, when you're seeing, if you go to church and, and all you have is just you know, raising your hands, all this excitement, all this moving around, you know, and um, it's, I'm telling you, it's demonic. Uh, read about how the Romans uh, would, would go with the, and worship their god Baal and all the gyrations and of course they're drinking and getting drunk and fornications but it's a wild it's a wild physical uh, emotional state <clears throat> that's what you're doing there forget the old hymns all the old hymns are gone and they got this rock music and these guys got dreadlocks and holes in their pants and everything I mean is this how you you go and present yourself to worship the Lord because make no mistake once you have been given the faith Give them the gift of faith. Yes, now it's Jesus. Now it's your, you know, you're 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 praising your Lord God. When you pray, you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, but you're you're giving your your praise and glory to Christ for what He did for us on the cross. By all means, but you cannot forget the fact that if it wasn't for God the Father to choose you in the beginning, you wouldn't be there. And just to to make any kind of negative remarks about uh, others being doomed. You know, you, you, you're, you're questioning God's sovereignty. You're questioning His glory for whatever for whatever reason. You don't know. You just don't know. You can't look at it from your own human intellect. It's too far beyond us. You just have to accept it for what it is. And, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say hope. It's either you're there or you're not there in terms of the elect, but um, uh, I, I can't imagine what it must be like if if you are a person who uh, knows the Bible, goes through the motions, but you realize in your heart you really don't believe it. Uh, you might as well go out there and have a good time for as long as you're going to be living, because if that's truly the way you feel, uh, you know there's something wrong there. Because you know you, uh, any any true uh, member of God's elect, the sheep that uh, Christ went to the cross for, his sheep, not the world, but his sheep. Um, we love him. We love him and God the Father and the Holy Ghost. We understand, uh, you know, our position. Uh, uh, we, we do our best to obey. We don't question. Without question, we obey. Without question. Uh, if we sing, we like to sing the old hymns. Uh, uh, you know, I, I love Southern Gospel. I just love it. Of quartets. But, um, you know, that's for me, it's like, no, that's my music on the side. Would I go to church and, and, and jump a jump? No, not at all. Now, I might have a, they might have a, a group come and sing a song, a hymn, yeah. But I'm not going to jump and jive and do all this stuff here, you know, like I'm feeling something, you know. Uh, no, I, that's not the way it is. By all means, it's not the way it is. Uh, speaking in tongues, blah, blah, babble. No, you, you, there again, if you're reading the scriptures, all those people spoke in a literal language. Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek, whatever. It was several, I mean, there was several, a lot, a lot of languages. They didn't babble. And yet you'll have these guys say, oh, the Spirit, you got to go to Are you kidding me? And you're going to believe that? If you believe that and you do it, you're right where you're supposed to be, and that's not a, that's not a, a true believer. You're, you're just going through the motions like, like anybody else, Buddhist or, or atheist or what have you. Yeah, but you're not. You're not one of God's chosen. You're just not. They'll talk about uh, they meaning the pastors. Now I'm not talking about the new radicals. I'm, I mean, you know, the the ones that are now. That I mean, they're siding with the Pope now. <clears throat> and why not? Because the Trinity is a, is is a Catholic man-made doctrine. Over 300 years after the death of Christ, and you have to all affirm this. Oh, that's really the way it is. I mean, brilliant men. 
again, these these pa these pastors I, I just mentioned earlier. Are you kidding me? They're like what uh, is mentioned in, in in Galatians. If they happen to come to me like an angel, well, you know, nice suit. The one guy, the other guy, he's always in, in khakis and whatnot, in some shirt, cracking bad jokes. But these guys are looked up to as you know really great men, huh? Really. And yet they, they don't seem to know the difference. They seem to stand by their guns, and I think a lot of it too anymore. It gets to the point to where these churches are corporations. Now yeah, we're talking money. Yeah, they, they, need, they need people in those seats, in those large buildings that they have. They, they they drool at what Joel Osteen is able to do and Joyce Myers. They don't <laughs> they don't have some little church on the corner. They go to stadiums, basketball stadiums, you know, hockey hockey rinks, uh, huge huge stadiums, and fill them. Osteen, Osteen, two three congregations every Sunday, packed. Um, I saw one time with Joyce Myers there. And they had a camera from the very back, way up on top. She looked a little bitty thing down there, way a little bitty. And she went through this thing. Well, you know, she's just slashing the the, uh, the general mentality of Christians and, and, and preachers and all that. And of course, because you know they, they say you know women can't preach and all that stuff because of the Bible. Corinthians talks about that. She's always been a bitter point for her. <clears throat> and she said she's going to do something to kind of you know kind of like, you know stick it in her eye, whatever. And she finally, him hauls around with it. She said, Dave told me, better not do that. Joyce, better not do it. And she said, hey, I know Dave. And finally, she just kind of looks around the crowd. And the crowd's like, what is it going to be? What's it going to be? She looks this way. And she looks this way real slow again. A little snicker. And she looks back again. You know, kind of a snicker. Then you hear the people kind of giggle. I'm going to get a tattoo. Man, you thought it was like uh, DeGeneres saying, hey, I'm, I'm gay. They jumped to their feet, everyone jumped to their feet, and they just yelled and applauded her and ran it and raved. And it was the greatest thing they ever heard. Really. Really. You know, it's sad. It really is. It really is sad. I don't know if she's done it yet. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't watch her <laughs> But um, uh, she said you're going to put it on the back of your shoulder. I belong to Jesus or something like that or Christ. I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, the people just to go. It's just, I mean, it's just like when someone's, yeah, I'm gay. And they just go crazy on TV. Oh, what a great thing. What a wonderful thing. Man, there's scripture about that. It's one thing to be doing evil. But when you support it and acknowledge it and even teach it, pfft, it's probably worse for you than the others. That's a shame. It really is a shame. And um, you know, I've mentioned this before, but um, just this last Christmas, you know, my uh, my sister. Uh, I was just asking my niece. Uh, I know my niece. You know, has gotten religion in the last year or two. And I was asking her something about this church that she was at. And I just asked, a I forgot what it was. It might have been what Bible she's using or whatever. And, and my message just jumped all over, all over me. And just, uh, you think you know so much, don't stop. You, don't, you, you always hurt, you make her feel bad. I said, what do you mean I always make her feel bad? I never even see her, you know. <laughs> you know, I did see her one time years ago when she first talked about being in church. And, um, but apparently that was um, uh, not a good moment for it, and I didn't realize it. You know, I just, you know, uh, I may have been talking about the different Bibles, you know, and whatever. But uh, uh, apparently she had took offense to it, and never said anything. I had no, I had no idea. It was not my intention whatsoever. So I'm assuming that's what they're referring to, because that was a one-time deal, and that was years ago. And just what my sister was just exploded and just 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 really uh, you think you know so much and you the Bible and this and that. I've never I've never said that. I'm I'm still trying to learn like everyone else. I, I never said that, you know. And I said that I don't I never meant never meant to hurt her. Never meant to uh, you know. 
and um, it just uh, just I can't remember all exactly what she said, but really bad, very angry, you know, uh, very vicious, and and just attacking me and the Bible, religion, period. Because she's now, she used to be involved in a Baptist church in town, and then she uh, finally got to where she was uh, running around with someone, and, and uh, finally came out that she's uh, she she turned gay, and. Uh, She's now married to this woman, lives that kind of lifestyle, and uh, she had a position with the county where she, anyone had a, a Bible on a desk, she made her remove it. Didn't want any artifacts of crosses, whatever, you know. I mean, man, she just gets really livid and crazy, and uh, it's a shame, you know. But this is what I'm saying, is that, uh, you know, you don't know uh, where it could come from at any given time, but you have to be able to, you know, Here's something that's wrong, especially from a past. Just because a pastor's got a nice suit on, or he's in rags, and he says something that doesn't jive with what you've read, you, you've got to really ask yourself. Uh, either ask him to clarify himself if you're not sure, or if you do understand the scripture, get out. It's just like when that. When that Jezebel was going after uh, uh, Joseph, now I'm not saying she's Jezebel, but um, I think it's Potiphar, Potiphar's, uh, his wife, and she wanted to have relations with him, and I mean, you know, Joseph ran. He, and that's what you do. You turn around and you run, you get out, something like that. Um, uh, unfortunately for like my sister, there's scriptures about anyone who uh, comes across God's as he puts it, my, any of my little ones, and uh, he said <laughs> in the scripture, he says, it'll be worse for them, all right? It'll be worse for them than if they had a millstone wrapped around their neck and plunged to the bottom of the sea. That's bad, but it's going to be worse for them. So, you know, I, uh, it's done, you know, and uh, it's a shame. So, I would have to really uh, point out that, yes, it is very important uh, for our salvation to come to Christ and, uh, and, and confess our sins, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, you know, and, and, and hail Christ and worship Him, but... We came to Christ because we were drawn by the Father. Not that we just decided to come to Christ, say some sinner's prayer, give me a break. Say some sinner's, now I'm not saying that perhaps some people, that might be their little click, little snap, that that's their predestined moment. But just the arbitrary say, say to say this prayer like you know, Lowry's always saying, say this prayer with me and we'll save you. It don't want, it doesn't work that way. Believe me, it doesn't work that way. And I think a lot of reason why they're trying to get all these people into, I need to help you. I can help you to come to Christ. I can help you to be whole because they get them in the door and they're they're, they're putting money down. He can't help. He can't do it, and he knows this. This is this has already been set forth. But for him to know that, and then to and then to dis, discredit it or or refuse to uh, uh, to believe it, he's got a bigger problem now. All right, because now he's disputing the word of God, and he's going his own way. And now that is satanic. I don't care how you put it. To to refuse the word of God and say it's not right, and I don't believe it, and I'm gonna do it. How else? How else? Can, what can a man be thinking of other than that he's just demon possessed? He thinks he's right, that he's going to do it this way, and all the other people. Like I would say, many are called, and few are chosen, and we have the elect, and then we have uh, everyone else, and everyone else has got to be someplace, whether it's Scientology, or with Greg Laurie, or. Or, 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 or an atheist, or agnostic, or a Buddhist, uh, you know, a Catholic. They, they got to be someplace, and they're all subject to the law. 
And they probably don't think so, but they will when that day comes. And I think that day is coming pretty close. Because even Revelation talks about how just before uh, uh, the return of Christ, uh, uh, this world is going to go into apostasy. And boy, I mean, look at look where we're at right now in this country. <clears throat> and, and I spent uh, 13 years in France, and you want to see uh, an apostate uh, nation. They got these Catholic churches all over the place, which is no big deal. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful uh, construction. Whatnot. But there's very little, very little true uh, Christians and belief, belief over there. So, <clears throat> again, all I'm trying to I'm trying to stress here is that our salvation starts with God the Father. Period. The true creator of all things. He created all the angels. He created uh, He created Lucifer, who was a cherub, not a, not an angel. He was a cherub, and a good, and he gave Lucifer, the morning star, everything, knowing he couldn't last without falling into iniquity. All beauty, all beauty, all knowledge, all knowledge, right? Uh, he gave a certain amount of power. Um, he's able to go up and down in the, to, to the guard, even back up again, heaven or whatever. You know, these guys live in a different, again, a different di di a dimension. So however they do this. And he was not a brother of, of, of Jesus. Um, he was a cherub an exalted cherub and Jesus was a son of God a created son of God and why they why they you know they they get so upset when you say he's created of course because they want to push a trinity they don't want to push the 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 the, the written fact that God the Father is the creator of all things of all things And um, obviously, he created the Holy Ghost. He is the true creator. And he gave them, these two, creative powers. They all also can create. Christ was taught how to create this world. He is the Lord God of this world. He is the God of this world. Every now and then, you hear something about God the Father coming in there, like in Hebrews and and I, and I believe in Matthew when, when, when Jesus was baptized. But the God of this world is Jesus Christ. He was Lord God, even when he was in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem telling these guys who he was. He was still Lord God then, and he was Lord God after the cross. You know, when they talk about this Romans 10-9, uh, God raised him up. No, no, God didn't raise him up. He raised himself up. In Luke, when he talks about uh, the, the, the thief, he says, today you will be in paradise with me. And when they died, wow, they were in paradise. They, didn't, they just died. The body is gone. You know, when your body is gone, it's done. In your mortal body, it can go in an ocean. It can get burned up, blown up, whatever. Your mortal body has served its purpose, and it's done. To go back and, and go to seminaries, cemeteries, and... And, and, and worship the ground there. No, you can do this at home to worship your, your your lost loved ones. But remember this: in heaven, there is no marriage. We're not given a marriage, and there's no marriage. So, <clears throat> to think that well, I'm going to be up there. Well, you're going to be up there if you're going to be up there. You're going to be up there as whatever we are going to be. But there's no. Apparently, as as it says, there is no. You're not given a marriage. So there's no marriage. I, I don't know how that works. It's kind of even disturbing for me to think that, but I just don't understand how it's going to work out. It's, it's a different, you know, we're going to be in a different dimension, in a different type of uh, life. Uh, but we have the millennium to go through, that's a thousand years. So that's way, way back in the future as far as we're concerned. Um, uh, when Christ gave his life at the cross. John 10, 17 and 18. No man takes my life from me. I have power to lay it down 
and I have power to take it up again. This power I have been given of the Father to lay my life down and to take it up again. This commandment I have received of the Father. Now that says it all. A commandment of the Father to take his life up again. And so there we go, God this, God this, God, you know, and then in, in Romans 10, 9, uh, uh, you know, express through your mouth that Lord God, etc., etc., and that God raised uh, Jesus from the dead. God. Oh, that's the Trinity. No, it's not the Trinity. It's Lord God who raised his uh, new celestial body uh, uh, up. He raised himself, like he, he put himself down, and he raised himself up, commanded of the Father to do that. And it's there in Scripture, and the people, I, I mean, what book are these guys, all these other people reading? That they don't say, wait a minute, pastor, that's not quite right. It says this here, no one, no one ever questions a pastor. Oh, the pastor's untouchable, right? Especially if he's wearing nice suits and everything, and got that big church going, you know, and got that big whatever, you know, writes all these books. That's something else, too. I remember when I was having my questions, and they knew I was questioning about this Trinity, you know, and I was, I met with some elders and some other assistant pastors a few times at the church. This is Grace Community that I belonged to. And all these guys, all their offices, <laughs> they got their little library, all these books, all these different books, you know. <clears throat> and it used to catch my eye how every one of their offices was like this. They all had all these different books. And of course, you see these guys on, you know, on the internet, and they got all these books, all the other books behind them. So always got to, they got to be in front of their library. You, know? you need only one book, and that's the Bible. That's all you need. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I mean to to reference your beliefs on these other guys' uh, clever documents is is uh, I think is a trap. You know, uh, uh, they have their um, little agendas too. You know, the the, the one the one writer. Uh, Lewis, I forgot a couple of initials. I, look him up. Look up the, his biography. He's got some. He's got some difficulties there too. And he's not even. Uh, if I'm not if I'm mistaken, he's not really a uh, 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 you know, admitted uh, true follower of uh, any any. How do I put it? You know, like a church or whatever. You know, he he's a clever writer. You know, and he says something. Some things that they uh, they always kind of refer to, but uh, uh, all these guys have some kind of a they don't believe this, they don't believe that, you know. Uh, Martin Luther, oh boy, you know, one of the king kingpins of the Reformation, hated Jews, man, hated them, thought they should all be uh, ripped of all their possessions and, and assets and everything, and put in prisons, you know. Uh, I guess because uh, you know the Jewish people are the ones who crucified Christ but that was a few people that's not the whole that's like saying every German should you know, even even today should be in jail because of the Holocaust I mean that's that's crazy that's just crazy so uh, that's it um, as always my email address is down at the bottom I, I know that a lot of people won't uh, agree with what I'm saying because a lot of people just don't have the ability to understand what I'm saying, but I, it would be my hope that someone out there who is being closed or has already reached their uh, predestined time will realize what I'm saying, and they're probably hearing for the first time about God the Father, who is uh, the, the key figure in our salvation. He is the key figure in our salvation. Not Jesus Christ, but God the Father. Without God the Father, there is no salvation. Jesus Christ is the one who does a huge uh, sacrifice of himself in taking upon himself our sins. And yes, that is a, the atonement of Christ is by no means no small thing. But I'm saying without God the Father to have chosen us to begin with, 
it would never happen. You know? And that's kind of silly anyways, because uh, th there is only one plan of salvation, and that's it. To, 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 I think all I'm trying to emphasize is that you really should understand that it's God the Father first. Uh, when you pray, like I pray, I pray for wisdom and understanding through God the Father to give you more understanding and wisdom to understand Scripture and, and to be able to expound it to someone when you get a chance. I'm not saying go out on the street and make a, you know, make a fool of yourself and do that because, again, you don't throw your pearls before swine. But if you happen to be in a situation where someone was willing to listen and, and even ask questions, by all means, and just hope that, uh, not hope, I mean to pray that that uh, the Spirit will, 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 will give you uh, the words you need to say to help someone understand uh, you know what you're trying to uh, convey in, 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 uh, in God's Word. So with that uh, I just hope you would uh, when you're reading your scripture and hopefully it's in the King James Bible and realize when you're seeing God, you know, who you're speaking of, what God is. Not the Trinity. It's never the Trinity. More likely it's probably Lord God. There is one Lord of this world. There's one Lord who created this world. There's one Lord who made man in the image of God, and that is Jesus Christ. So uh, God the Father, he knew us. Uh, and that's another word very and he knew us intimately uh, before the, the worlds were in uh, if you truly feel that you are among the elect thank God literally thank God for it uh, just over and over again it just it, it's just so breathtaking you know uh, I don't know how else to put it other than it's just um, oh, it's just you know, without that, you're lost. Thank God that He gave us the gift of faith and exercise it every every chance you get to try, try to be stronger with it and help others where you can. And if if you can tell they don't, don't force it because you don't want to bring them under any worse condemnation that they're already going to have, like my sister. You know, that poor thing. She's uh, already it's already bad, but now it's going to be even worse for her. So. As always, um, I, you know, I wish you the best and uh, blessings to you all. I uh, hope this reaches someone who is uh, who, who's, who, who feels that, uh, that that burning desire to know more about God the Father and His Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, again, if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to give me a, uh, a shout on my internet. You may not want to type a comment, but Give me a shout on the internet. I got my, again, my email address down there. And as always, uh, I leave you with this. I'm in Christ, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.